Hello and a big welcome to all of you all. You have been observing that all these videos that are coming through you are all research content. One. Second, they are coming with a sample template answers. But you need to watch the process to understand why we have arrived at that particular answer. So hope this makes sense. What is that which we are addressing today is one more interview important question and that is what is your biggest failure so let's get going during a job interview you may be asked challenging questions about your prior work experiences and how you handle different situations while it's not possible to prepare for every potential interview prompt the hiring manager may ask is what is your biggest failure Understanding how to answer this question can impress upon interviewers your resiliency and ability to turn failure into a learning opportunity. Situation turn into an opportunity. In this particular shoot, we'll discuss as to why interviewers ask about failures as well as examples of how to answer this question effectively. Why employers ask questions about failure is to understand that interviewers understand that no one is perfect what they want to understand is whether you are self aware enough to acknowledge your shortcomings and whether you are someone who can learn from your missteps failures also tell a lot about who you are as an employee and whether you are comfortable taking smart risks and pushing beyond your comfort zone to achieve goals this question also tells them how you view risk failure and success in general if you have never failed you may have never taken risks or succeeded either how to answer what is your biggest failure here are some steps that we lay down for you to have a close look at first choose a specific failure Pick a real failure that happened in the workplace, especially a failure related to the work you are doing now. Look for a story where something didn't go as planned. Choosing the right story is important as you want to explain a situation where only one thing went wrong. This will help keep the story brief and make it easy to articulate what you learned. and what you can do differently next time a team failure can also be a great choice to share with your interviewer because you share responsibility with others it's just important to take responsibility for your role in why it was a failure second important thing is share your story share with the interviewer the story you choose Keep in mind that the purpose of asking the question is to evaluate how you handle setbacks. So try to rapidly move to the part of the story where you talk about how you managed the failure. You may want to discuss what made the situation challenging and what you did to try to rectify it. Be open about the fact that the situation did not go as planned. Number 3 focus on what you learn talk about what you believe went wrong and cause the failure what you would have done differently and what changes you made moving forward for example let's say your failure was the result of assuming what your customers wanted your take away from the experience could be that you will never make an assumption again and in the future you will perform more market research and survey your customer base even testing the product with a small sample of people before fully investing in a new product or services so example answers for what is your biggest failure let's look at them all so here we are trying to give you few sample answers sample template to augment all that we have just mentioned so hope you follow all the three steps that we have just mentioned and try to incorporate your own customized answer looking at the templates that we are just laying down for all of you 
Example number one. I was managing a project where a new client wanted a large number of unique product descriptions written to improve the SEO ranking of their site because they were a new client and I wanted to impress them with the kind of results we could produce. I assured them we could have it back to them in two weeks. I thought this was doable with multiple writers working on the same project but in the end it took an extra week and they were not happy. We apologized and reassured them that the mistake wouldn't happen again. I realized that it's far better to under promise and over deliver. The client isn't going to be upset when you are clear about what the timeline is from the beginning. Problems arise when you can't meet promised deadlines. I used this experience to be more cautious in managing client expectations for the next client project I worked on. I made sure to include extra time for unforeseen circumstances and told them we would deliver in four weeks. We delivered in three weeks and they couldn't have been more thrilled. Example number two. I took a job where I was responsible for building a sales team that could fix the major revenue problems the company was having. I was overly confident in my abilities and certain I would be able to accomplish the goal. After arriving though, I realized the problems were not just in revenue but in the way the company was organized. I knew within one month that I wouldn't be able to make the impact I anticipated. I briefly considered quitting when I knew I wouldn't come close to the sales goals I promised. But instead, I decided to focus on the things I could control. I met with the company's executives and altered our sales goals for the year. We also decided to scale back the size of my team and bring on a consultant to fix some of the company's deeper problems. Being in this situation reminded me of the importance of focusing on what you can control and collaborating to find solutions to complex problems. I also learned a hard lesson in humility and of not jumping in and making promises before fully understanding the scope of the problem. Example number three. Several years ago, my supervisor tasked me with interviewing, hiring and training an entry level person to join our customer service team. I chose to hire someone who seemed eager to learn and based on past work experiences seemed to have a lot of potential. I did have a few concerns after checking their social media sites but chose to hire them anyway. I quickly learned it was a mistake and that their social media activity was a strong indication of their behavior at work. They were highly dramatic, had a poor attitude and impacted the entire team until I had to fire them. The experience taught me how important every hiring decision is. From senior staff to interns, each person impacts company morale and culture. It also taught me not to rush to make any hiring decisions and get feedback if I have concerns about a candidate. I learned to trust my intuition more. However, it's a lesson I'm glad I learned early in my career. I'm sure by answering all these and showing you the templates, you would certainly come to some kind of a logic, some kind of a real structuring and framing of your own sample template. 
while you are facing one or the other failure you are also facing to learn how you have overcome and not to repeat the same failure or mistake the next time so this time we know for sure that what is your biggest failure is going to get answered the more productive way the more logical way and perhaps the best way so be best prepared thank you